minimal is my abstraction. This is going to be the common denominator between all things, and speak is going to be the behavior that I'm really going to focus on here. over here. So there's really not much else to add. So I guess that's done. Yeah. It might be a little confusing in the future for looking at the check-ins, but you aren't watching the video to see that we kind of had two steps in one. But all right, so now you need to um, select or create a context. So that, that's what we, we don't have a context yet. We don't have something to, to hold this collection of animals. So let's come back out to here. And we'll create a new folder. And it's going to say zoo. Seems simple enough. Animals are in a zoo. And then we're going to add a new item. I'm just going to call this Zoo Display. Couldn't tell you why. It's just a, it's a, just a context. It's something that we're going to want to encapsulate things inside of. So make that a class. All right, now, so the only requisite for a context, as far as the flyway pattern is concerned, is that it contains a public collection. And we can use collection. Um, I think. With to keep things simple, a uh, dictionary. You'll see other examples of flyways out there that actually use a hash table, hash tables, dictionaries. It's all it's all the same, honestly, for our needs. There's some nitty gritty differences, but dictionary is going to be your more user friendly example, I think. All right, so. I'm going to create a dictionary that has a, a GUID because we do need we need an identifier, some way to grab the animal out, and we're just going to call this animals, and we'll make it a property. Okay, this is probably this is probably a step we could have marked in the um, previous one when we were saying, hey, create the what was it? Create the abstraction. Because the key, one of the key things about the abstraction here is that you have to have some sort of identifier. So we're just going to call this animal key. Okay. So we've got a key to identify each animal uniquely. So even if we had 15 monkeys, we can say, well, there's 15 different monkeys. And... We also have a context, something to um, house these animals. The only other thing that we're going to need here, and I, I might, I don't know if I keep saying the only other thing, but the next thing that we're going to need is going to be some sort of um, way to access this collection and, and kind of search through it. So we'll make this, so we'll make this public. Um, I animal, say get animal, we'll take in a GUID, we'll call that animal key, and then we're just going to return animals, oops, animal key. It seems super simple. It seems almost too simple. And we'll get into the nitty gritty of what makes this special here in just a second. But um, that's our context. The context for a flyweight pattern is something that's going to house this collection that we want to access efficiently. And it's also going to give us, uh, give us a way to reach that collection. We're going to make it public, but keep in mind it could also be private. It could be, th it could be something that you don't actually have access to from outside of the zoo display. But for ease, we'll make it public. Okay. The, I think what would also be kind of helpful 
is if we sh just go ahead and seed. So, public zoo display. We won't take anything in here. Any but, so keep that there as a, as a constructor. We'll use that in a second. All right, let's go ahead and commit this step. Okay. Create some concrete flyweights. And all that means is we need to make some animals. Same way that in the factory pattern we need to make some cars, whatever have you. So we can come back in here. I'm going to say add new item. And we'll make two to kind of keep it short. We'll create a monkey. We're going to inherit I animal. It immediately tells us that we've got some things we need to, we need to satisfy. So we'll implement those, number, those missing numbers. Do some quick cleanup here. Oops. Then for this, I'm just going to return string dot format something goes ooh ooh ah uh ah. -uh. I don't know if that's insensitive to monkeys, but it could be. Let's say monkey. And we want to express that it's a different monkey every time. Animal key. Oh, sorry. Um, Mobius Maximus says, I think your terms might be a little off, at least from how I understand implement DDD. If you're doing DDD, zoo display would be your root aggregate. I am a little your domain object. The only entities would have a segregate key where value objects have natural keys. Uh, maybe. Um, so, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll address that. So, uh, in this case, uh, we, we could decide that zoo display is the root aggregate of the zoo domain. I just didn't make that distinction. Um, I guess in my mind, uh, zoo display is going to be just another object in, in, this, in the zoo domain. I, I don't necessarily want to convey that just because it's the only class there that we're saying this is the domain aggregate. Um, but, and then, I'm sorry, the other part was, I don't, I don't necessarily understand the I animal would be your domain object, then only entities would have a surrogate key where value have said natural keys. I don't, do you want to elaborate? Um, uh, go for, uh, have at it. I'll, I'm just going to move on because the pattern is actually pretty simple. Um, but I'd love to deep dive since we're chewing through it pretty quickly into some of the particulars. Okay. So, I'll make one more animal. I'll make it a panda. I'm just going to steal these guys from the monkey class. Alright, so create some concrete flyweights. Let's go ahead and commit. Okay. 
now I just need to wire all this up. So to help with that, because typically this is something you want to do with a lot of objects, and those objects could typically come from an outside source like a database or something like that. For the purpose of the kata, I'm just going to say that animals equals new dictionary. And then I'll say animals.add new. Um, mm, all right, we'll do it this way. Var key is equal to new wid dot new wid. You will find that if you don't do this and you just do that, you'll get a bunch of zeros. We want to call new wid, which will generate a wid for us. So we'll pass in key. And then we're going to say new monkey. We're going to pass in our key again. We'll say George. And we have to say animal key. And name. Okay. Let's do that a few times. Not the most effective, but I think we'll get the point across. I'm doing this kind of a procedural scripty kind of way, just to kind of show that um, this is where you probably would have want to have a factory. So in, in the discussion of between what the difference between a factory pattern and a um, flyway pattern is, you could have a factory, but it wouldn't, if you, you wouldn't go here, right? You want to have a factory outside of this. Uh, class. Even though we're implementing the flyway pattern on top of the zoo display object, uh, this wouldn't be the right place to interject a, a animal factory. So it's, once you kind of see it, you're like, it, it does kind of make sense. You kind of say, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't want to have the ability to create monkeys or pandas inside of zoo display. I want to have that someplace outside of zoo display, um, pr probably in the animal domain. Uh, yeah, Mobius Maximus says that I have uh, I confused terms earlier on. Um, he also says that you know that I'm not teaching DDD. That's true. Um, so I apologize if I confuse terms in an effort to, to get the flyweight pa pattern across. Um, that might happen. Eh, I am human, but uh, but yeah. So uh, probably not going to be too strictly DDD here. It's really just a guide for me to kind of keep things organized. Um, in this example, especially, where you can say, hey, I have to manually create these monkeys over and over again. It'd be great if I had some sort of creational pattern, like a factory. Where would that go? So in, in asking that question, I think it's helpful to be able to say, oh, it would go along with the animal domain, right? It would be like animal factory. I wouldn't put that creational pattern within the zoo domain. So I think that's, that, that's the illustration of um, the method of the madness. It is, it is, it is wrought, with, with probably wrought with inconsistencies and a few mistakes, but it's getting us there. Okay, so, oops, I'm still wiring it all up. So now, now I've got a bunch of monkeys, right? A bunch, a bunch of monkeys.